What if I told you that your desire for a higher status in life might be your biggest obstacle? And what if I told you that comfort with being low status might be the easiest career unlock ahead of you? Many of us are brought up from an early age to chase prestige. Childhood has become a rat race to get into Ivy League schools and to captain the sexiest sports teams that will impress everybody around you. And you do it so that then you can eventually work for glamorous companies and impress your family members at the Thanksgiving table every year. But why? Why do we do this? Why do we chase prestige so intensely? Where does this drive come from? For answers, let's turn to the work of a French social theorist named René Girard. And in that theory, he suggests that our cultural behaviors, they're imitative, and that from the time that we start learning language as children, we're learning by imitating others and mirroring the behavior patterns of other people around us. Eventually though, we learn not only to imitate other people's behaviors, but also their desires. We want what they want. And when that imitation spirals out of control, it can lead to rivalry, competition, and even envy. This is what happens when we chase prestige, when we stop trusting our own intuitions. And then, the allure of conspicuous consumption drives us to buy things we don't need with money we don't have so that we can impress people we don't even like. Look, everyone wants high status. You do, I do, we all do, it's who we are. But here's what you gotta remember. Every high status project starts off as a low status one. And sometimes when I get bored, open up my computer and I'll look at old photos of the early days of now prominent companies, now high status ones. And I'll go back and I'll look to those low status photos, like this one of early employees at Stripe, which is now a financial behemoth. And then if I have some extra time, I also like to watch this 60 Minutes interview from Jeff Bezos and the early days of Amazon. I was a good student. I always worked really hard. I was nerdy. You were nerdy. I was nerdy. <laughs> that hasn't changed, by the way. <laughs> Even if you're Jeff Bezos, most people are gonna look down on you before you've gained traction in whatever it is that you're working on. But projects can shift really fast from low status ones to high status ones. I actually just had dinner with a friend who, like six months ago, was working on a crazy startup idea that nobody believed in. Even when I heard it, I was like, what dude, no way. And now his company just raised around at nine figures for his valuation. And he's traveling the world with a small entourage, staying in five-star hotels, walking into Michelin star restaurants and wearing some of the finest cashmere that money can buy. But you gotta remember that the most important projects, the ones that change the world, the ones that go down in the history books, they start off looking like the opposite of prestigious. So what if you took a detour and started looking for opportunities where everybody else isn't? What could you tackle if you weren't so obsessed with leaping directly into high status projects? People who are entrapped in mimetic conflict, and this is going back to Gerard, think that they're too good for those low prestige projects. And the reason they think they're too good for it is because when they're working on them, they're not gonna get praised by their peers right away. But whether you're creative, whether you're an entrepreneur, this is where you're gonna have an advantage. For instance, think of most of the people who are jumping into Bitcoin now, they're only doing so because it's trendy and because their friends are seeing it as an opportunity, something worth investing in now. But those people, they weren't willing to commit to Bitcoin and invest a few years back when the industry was just a bunch of nerds. And back then, Bitcoin was seen as a low status project. And the rewards, they weren't immediate. The value of the coin wasn't worth that much, but that's why there was so much opportunity there. So the question is, how can you train yourself to take on low status projects that are worth pursuing when they arrive? I think it was Ben Franklin who once said, if everyone is thinking alike, then no one is thinking. And I wanna follow that idea because one trick is to prioritize differentiation over dominance. So you can either compete against everybody else and try to beat them fair and square, or you can play your own game and reduce the competition. And instead of trying to be the best, instead of trying to outcompete everybody else, you can simply try to be unique. Here's Peter Thiel, the famous Silicon Valley investor on the subject. He writes, you never wanna be part of a popular trend. So trends are often things to avoid. 
What I prefer over trends is a sense of mission, that you're working on a unique problem that people are not solving elsewhere. Then another method to consider is to surround yourself with people who don't care so much about the high status stuff, who are comfortable kind of playing in the dirt of life and looking for things that are interesting, not things that are prestigious. And by doing so, you'll stop valuing the prestige that you've been chasing so highly. All of us, we're social creatures, and if we're destined to fight for the recognition of our peers, well, we might as well curate a friend group that encourages a healthy set of desires, right? If you assume that your friend group is gonna determine who you're gonna become, well, that's fine, but just take a sense of agency in determining who that friend group is. It's no coincidence that the Latin word for prestige basically translates to mirage or illusion. If you remind yourself that this prestige really means nothing at the end, is sort of illusory, then you can train yourself to stop chasing it. It's only when we recognize that we're trapped in this mimetic conflict with other people, and that we're trapped in this drive to chase prestige, that we can step outside of ourselves and start looking beyond the myopia of pride and start looking for low status projects instead, being comfortable with those because we believe in the mission. We think we're working on something that other people aren't working on. And we think that we're doing things that are a meaningful and high value way to spend our time. These promising opportunities, they can lead to big wins over time because your peers, they're still gonna be stuck in those offices. They're still gonna be optimizing those ads just because it pays well. And they're still gonna be too busy competing with one another to seek out those hidden gems in the dirt. And for more ideas on how to actually discover these low status but high value opportunities, check out my video on looking for things that don't make sense.